Hey everyone. This video is about the much beloved HP 48GX, uh, which first came on the market in 1993. And the GX was the most advanced of HP's 48 series of graphing calculators. And there were three main ways it aimed to improve on its predecessor the 48SX. Uh, firstly, it improved on its hardware with a faster CPU, higher contrast display, uh, more memory and expandability, uh, and it also aimed to improve on the SX's ease of use, both for new and experienced users. And it did this in an interesting way by borrowing new ideas at the time from computer operating systems like Mac OS and Microsoft Windows. And lastly, it added a lot of new mathematics and graphing functionality uh, aimed at college-level science, maths, and engineering students. And it's interesting just how different the GX is from the SX. It really was a lot more than just a spec bump. I'm not going to be able to cover everything that was changed because there's really a long list. And the GX was one of three G-series models. Uh, the 48G was released around the same time and was designed to be affordable for school students. It was considerably cheaper than both the GX and the uh, previous S-series models, but it lacked the GX's memory and expandability. And there's also the 48G Plus, which came later in 1998. And this was a middle model in terms of capability, uh, with a larger memory of the GX, but no expandability. And although the GX was by far the most sophisticated, uh, sophisticated calculator on the market in 1993, uh, like the SX, it still suffered a lot from poor uh, performance of its built-in software, to the point that if we want to make the most of the hardware, we really need to replace a lot of the built-in operating system components with community-developed uh, alternatives, and I'll talk more about that later. So if we compare the SX and GX side by side, they do look very similar having the same shape case, but HP did do a light design refresh. So there's this subtle change in color of the body and key labels on the GX. Uh, the SX used the same dark brown color scheme as the Pioneers with uh, blue and orange uh, key labels, but with the GX, HP changed the color of the case to this dark blue and used uh, teal and lavender key labels. And I can understand why HP would have wanted to visually distinguish these models because again, they were more different than you might expect. Uh, but calculator design refreshes tend to be driven more by marketing than user experience reasons. Uh, they would have made the G models uh, appear newer, potentially driving sales slightly, and possibly HP wanted to align the colors closer to the HP brand or appeal more to students. Uh, but you can see it's kind of a halfway step uh, with um, between the SX and the later 48G, and you can see the direction that HP were heading. So I like that the GX looks different externally from the SX since there were many differences between the devices, but most people in the uh, collector community prefer the SX's colors, mostly because the orange and blue colors tend to be uh, easier to distinguish. For me, the biggest improvement uh, from the SX is the display, and there are actually two improved displays used in the G-series models. You can see this uh, 48G Plus has a higher contrast black version, and it's actually possible to find some GX models with the same display. Uh, so if you can find them, they are the best variants. And with the keyboard, there was a reorganization of the key functions on the GX. All the primary keys uh, are, functions are the same as on the SX, but a lot of the secondary functions have been moved around, especially on the top line uh, in this area on the keypad. And it does make it a little difficult to switch between the two models, so people tend to either be an SX or a GX user. Another more subtle difference is... This 48GX, which was made in Indonesia, 
uh, unlike this SX, um, does not have double injection molded keys. Instead, the labels are printed on the keys and potentially may wear off over time. Uh, double shot molded keys were always a feature of HP's calculators going back to the HP 35, where each key was made up of multiple components. Uh, corresponding to the label and the background. And of course, although these resulted in higher quality keys, uh, overall they were also a lot more expensive to produce. And it's not always easy to uh, visually distinguish between double shot molded and printed keys. Uh, but you will be able to notice the difference in font uh, between the G series and the S series. And actually all the G series calculators I have have slightly different fonts. Another big upgrade in the G series was the IO port. So slot two of the GX can access up to 32 ports by bank switching and where each port is 128 kilobytes. So that makes a maximum of uh, four megabytes in slot two. And this was intended for larger capacity RAM cards. And you can still buy these uh, from a company called Retrotronic, which I'll link to in the show description. As I mentioned, ease of learning and ease of use were <clears throat> one of the primary goals for the 48GX, and this was based on feedback HP had received from schools and universities that the SX was just difficult to use, both for new users and experienced users alike. And so the GX's user interface and many of its built-in applications were redesigned to use input forms based on uh, Macintosh or Microsoft Windows dialog boxes. Uh, so the if I hit the symbolic menu, uh, we can see uh, the previous soft key based menus were replaced by these choose boxes uh, that could be navigated using cursors and the enter key. And import forms like this one provide a uh, fill in the blank style uh, guide. Uh, and again, uh, the, you need to use the cursor key uh, and uh, the enter key a lot to navigate these. Uh, there were also uh, new message boxes to give feedback to the user. And uh, HP turned all of this into an application framework and exposed it to the program via um, RPL. And so a reoccurring theme within my videos is how calculators were the first electronic personal computing devices and how they influenced personal computers that came later. So it's interesting to see these ideas from PCs being brought back to calculators. And you can see this trend continue with current graphing calculators. So if you watch my video on the TI Inspire CX2 CAS, you can see probably the most advanced example of a Windows-like interface on a calculator. And although HP received positive feedback uh, from uh, education on the new user experience, uh, the implementation on the GX can feel very slow, and many power users uh, would still prefer the older soft key based menus. And as I mentioned, the GX added a lot of advanced functions aimed at university science, maths, and engineering students. For example, most of the SX's Solve Equation Library card is now uh, integrated directly into the device. So say we wanted to solve our uh, full distance equation, we can hit right shift on the Equation Library key. Uh, and we see a set of equation categories, so Let's pick motion and object in free fall. And uh, here we can see the equation being solved. Uh, and we can also see that in equation writer format. Uh, we can also see a description of the variables. So we've got an initial height and velocity y zero and v zero, a time value t, and then a final height and velocity after that time. Uh, so let's run the solver now. And let's simulate a stationary object being dropped from 100 meters. And so the way it works is that you enter your known values first. Uh, so let's enter uh, 100 meters into 
y zero uh, and then zero meters per second into v zero and let's see how long it takes the object to hit the ground so we'll set y to zero and uh, we want to solve for uh, both v and t uh, so the way we do that is hit uh, left shift and then all and uh, solving for t first so that's about four and a half seconds uh, and now v about negative 44 meters per second uh, which sounds right uh, so if we uh, hit right shift this time in equation library uh, hang on sorry left shift in equation library uh, you can see that uh, this actually comes with a uh, constants library as well uh, and uh, there's a bunch of utilities as well, such as the Mine Hunter game. And the GX added six new plot types, and the easiest way to try these out is to run the teach command. Uh, and this adds a bunch of example plots into uh, the calculator's variable structure. Uh, so, for example, if we hit var, var now, uh, there's an examples uh, directory and plots. Uh, and we can use the next key to select the ones we want. So there's a slope field plot which draws a lattice of line segments whose slopes represent the value of a function that takes a x and y value. Uh, there's a related pseudo contour plot which also draws a lattice of line segments, each of which is the tangent to a con uh, the contour of a function. Uh, next, there's a 3D wireframe plot which draws a perspective projection of a function at x, y uh, that gives a x, uh, z value. And there's a y slice plot, plot that draws a series of cross sections of a surface. There's also a grid map plot which treats x and y values as complex uh, numbers and applies a function that maps it to another complex number that gets plotted as an x and y value. And there's also a parametric surface plot which combines the grid map and the 3D wireframe plots together. And by the way, all those plots took a number of minutes to draw, uh, but even experiences like the equation uh, writer are still painfully slow on the GX. So, uh, for example, if I run it on this equation, uh, it will take um, many seconds to start up. And the slow performance uh, drove the user community to create their own faster replacements uh, for the built-in software. So there's alternative uh, stack viewers, filers, and matrix and equation writers. And the most notable uh, replacement system was Metakernel, created by three French programmers. And Metakernel was an incredible piece of engineering that I'll talk more about in a future video on the 49G. Uh, but there are other options as well, like, uh, such as Speed UI, and both of those dramatically sped up the 48GX. So if you're a frequent user of the device, it's really worth installing one of those. So in summary, the 48GX was an amazing device for 1993 with many improvements over the 48SX. Uh, the improved screen contrast and the built-in equation library would have been reason enough to upgrade. And although the form-based UI can be slow, it did make the learning curve easier than on the SX. And the GX did mark a turning point for HP calculators because internally at the time, there was a lot going on at HP. HP had previously shut down its US calculator division based in Corvallis, Oregon, where the design and manufacture of calculators were done at the same site. And the GX was partly designed by a new calculator team in Singapore and manufactured both in Singapore and Indonesia. So it marked the end of what many consider the heyday of HP calculators. But one thing that speaks to the power of the 48 series is, like the 41 before it, NASA used uh, the 48 uh, SX and GX on its space flights. These uh, pictures are from various shuttle missions 
and they come from an interesting site called HP in space. And whether they were used as backup flight systems or for more prosaic uses, it's not clear, but it shows the trust that NASA put in uh, what were really sophisticated battery-powered uh, portable computers. So the 48GX rightly belongs in uh, the short list of HP's greatest scientific calculators, and you can find many online debates about what was the pinnacle of HP's RPL line. Uh, most people would either choose the GX or the 50G, and I think there are good arguments for both. Uh, the GX has the traditional keyboard layout and build quality, as long as you ignore the printed keys, and the uh, 50G has uh, more but more power and speed. But you'll probably have your own opinion. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.